I have a mutual friend who was giving up this flat and so I took it. I never lived anywhere else in New York City. This is the first and the last place. I had an interview with my landlord. They heard that I'm an artist. They were really concerned. They were not sure whether I could actually pay the rent, but they let me live here. It was my living space and studio for 18 years. My artistic career started from here. But the whole process is to remember the space and also somehow memorialize the space. Whoever is going to buy this place is going to renovate this space and everything is going to go. It is quite a meaningful place for the family uh, and also for me. I've been moving around since I left Korea. I'm living in London now. It's a constant recalibration. I try to understand my life as a movement through different spaces. You can do this as well. No, don't worry. I know. Yeah. Yeah. After this project is done and peeled away from the space, I'll probably pack it and show it somewhere in the future. It's a bit difficult to take it off from, from the objects, but once, once you do that carefully, it still contains the shape of the object. I was constantly seeking some other means to capture the, the information of the space that was lacking from my fabric version. When I discovered it by rubbing, it just brought the memories associated with those details. And there's hundreds of thousands of it. When I did fabric, a version of this space, author, the landlord, he was supporting my project emotionally. You know, I don't know how much he understood what I was doing back then, but he always let me do crazy things in this space. <laughs> if I write rubbing in Korean, people could read it as a loving, because there's no distinction between R and L in Korean alphabet. I think the gesture of rubbing is a very loving gesture. So I made that connection between rubbing and the loving, and that's how the title came about. My energy has been accumulated, and in a way, I think my rubbing shows that. The darker area doorknobs and locks, that's the objects that you touch every time and just imagine how many times that I actually flipped that light switch when I was living in here for 18 years. I'm trying to show that layers of time. From the distance, it looks like a drawing. As you get closer, it becomes very sculptural and three-dimensional. There's a point where it sort of changes from two-dimensional to three-dimensional. Arthur, who was suffering with Alzheimer's disease, a few months before he passed away, I made a special effort to see him. He warned me that he may not remember me. I was prepared for that, but we end up talking two hours. So at the end of the day, I asked him to come down to see what we were doing. I showed him around and then he said, oh, there's nothing much to see, you know, which is understandable. 
But then he sat down and told me, you're welcome to do whatever you want to do in this house. And I was almost going to burst into tears because that's exactly what he told me, you know, 13 years ago when I was measuring the hallway four o'clock in the morning because I didn't want to disturb other people. But he came down so quietly and then saw me measuring the cord and he said like, what are you doing? And I tried to explain, you know, about the project, but he said the exact same thing. Do whatever you want to do.